Hello everybody, welcome to episode 100 of the Spare Change Challenge. It's been a while, I apologize for that, but we are back and ready to play some poker. I have been playing just a more sporadic hours, not really on a schedule, that type of thing. And honestly, just haven't hit the stream button. Um, I've just been playing maybe 30 minutes here, 40 minutes there, an hour here, an hour there, you know, that type of thing. I'm not sitting down and just playing for one or two hours um, on a schedule. So I've been meaning to get back on pace here and start streaming again. So I'm going to at least in some capacity be streaming, streaming again, um, hopefully back on the consistent five days a week at least. And we'll see what happens from there. Um, so as most of you know, there's been quite a few changes on ignition, at least one major change. And that's that there really is no longer any table selection. When you um, want to play poker, uh, play cash games, you are given a choice of what type of poker you want to play, um, six max, heads up, nine handed, and then you choose your stake and you click take my seat and it randomly I guess or puts you on the next available open seat. I'm not sure exactly how the queue works but you have no choice you can't choose a table by VPIP um, yeah you're pretty much just at the mercy of wherever they stick you so it makes for very difficult it's very difficult to find the bad players which is obviously good for the recreational players which is why they probably did it in the first place so I can't blame them and well, if you think about it at face value, it's disappointing because you can't target the bad players as easily anymore. But when you think about it on the long-term scale, since the games will be better for recreational players, ostensibly, right? That increases the likelihood there will be more um, recreational players as a whole of the population. I mean, that's the theory, right? Because they won't be targeted as often by the regulars and they'll main, hold on to their money longer. Yada yada, right? They'll be happier because they're not getting their, getting owned as much. Um, so you get the picture. So I think the long term result might be who knows at this point whether it's going to be a good thing, bad thing, or neutral. All we can do is just continue playing. The good thing is the Regulars on this site are pretty dang bad anyway. So if you're playing in a more reg-heavy environment, at least they're not great regulars, right? Um, so, but what I've decided is to build a sample up at 100 to no, which I'm thoroughly rolled for. I have over 100 buy-ins now. I, I the bankroll is at the end of April. Um, you can see this on my blog, at automaticpoker.com. I wrote up my entire. Um, um, review of last month. Um, well, that's my train of thought. But anyways, I <laughs> I was at 3,300 at the end of the month. Uh, that's just the whole point, and that's over 100 buy-ins for the stake for me. Um, I didn't really feel comfortable just jumping right into 200 and L again, not knowing how the state of the games or whether I could even beat the games, honestly. So why don't I 100 and L and 200 and L are pretty much the same thing on this site, honestly. Maybe 200 is slightly tougher, but you know there's a lot of uh, fish that play in the casinos at 200 and L, so they transition into online poker at 200 and L as well. So maybe the theory is that maybe 200 and L could even be softer. So I know if I can beat 100 and L pretty soundly, um, I'm probably going to be able to beat 200 just as soundly. Um, so the th I want to build up a pretty big sample at 100 and L. I'm going to play this entire month at 100 and L, try and put in a huge amount of volume, and just see what happens. And if I beat it soundly by the end of the month, we'll move up to assuming we're rolled, which I'm assuming we would be if we beat them 100 that much, or that soundly. We'll play the entire month um, of, of June, I guess. What is it, May now <laughs> already? Um, at 200 and now. I think mixing stakes doesn't quite make as much sense until we get to the stakes where the tables aren't populating that great. Um, I like it like 400 and L, 600 and L, and 1,000 L will probably 
play multiple stakes at that point. But for now, where the games seem to run enough at on 100, 200 NL, we'll just stick to one stake. Since we can't really chase fish around or do it by VPIP on the tables, we just kind of got to take whatever comes up. So we might as well just do it at one stake. Anyway, right now, we'll, we'll mix later maybe. Um, so we'll do 200 NL solely next month, probably, depending on how this month goes. I mean, if we're barely able to beat 100, we may do another month of 100 NL. Um, hopefully, we're not just stuck at 100 NL. But if we are, I mean, no big deal. What, what's my hourly normally at this stake? You know, 100, I mean, uh, 15, 20 dollars an hour. So, I mean, it wouldn't be the end of the world, but it would be disappointing. Um, anyways, not to be too long-winded about it, that's the plan going forward. And I was thinking of doing something, I don't know, special for episode 100, but really I just can't think of anything. I mean, I don't want to play a tournament just because it's such a time sink. And do I really want to upload 7-8 hours to YouTube? <laughs> Uh, I don't really just want to throw $100 into a sit-and-go or even $50. It just seems like it's just stupid at this point. Um, so I'm just going to play my normal game, just stay on schedule, just treat it like any other episode. And, yeah, that's about it. So I'll go from there. Um, we won't do as much table selection. It's unfortunate. Now, if I get on a table that's just got really tough players on it, I'll leave it. But I'm not going to leave a table just because it looks bad. Uh, I'm just going to play the month out. Um, I will be kind of nitty, like if I get up to like 33, 34 by, uh, big blinds, or if I get above 30 big blinds and the table looks bad, I might just leave then and try to find a better table. But as you can see right now, it's tough to even get four tables going. Um, so we, beggars can be choosers, right? But I've been playing for a while. I mean, I played like... I mainly played 100 Danelle for the last 15, 16, 17 days of of um, April, and you can see those results on my blog. Now, results are preliminarily, I guess, is that the word? Pretty good. I think I was like eight, nine big blinds per 100. I think I ran really bad early on in that. I went from about 1,700 up to. Um, where I'm at now, which is just below 3,400 to start the month. Now, I'm not looking at the cashier this month. That's something I talked about doing in the past, and it was kind of tough to do when you're mixing stakes and you're not deeply rolled because you don't want to bust your roll, right? But I think with over 100 buy-ins, I think I'm pretty safe not to bust the roll, so I think I could just go the whole month without looking at the cashier, and we'll just have an episode where at the end of the month we check out how we did for the month. Look at this flop. <laughs> and... Um, and it'll be like a little ceremony at the end. We'll see how we did. We'll make goals for the next month, and then we'll go from there. Um, yeah, I'm not going to slow play this. With the open-ended straight flush draw, legitimate straight flush draw. I have two outs to the straight flush here, so I'm not going to. Uh, I'm just going to shove any turn if I get called, which I don't. So it's really good to win at ten with ten high. Surely I have like above 50% equity against almost anything that's getting it in with me there. Um, but I'm fine with 10 high just winning on the flop as well. It's exciting to make straight flushes, but we'll just win it on the flop there and be happy. Um, so obviously our little trap here was set. Hopefully this guy is not strong. And we just either take this one down pre-flop or win a flip. Looks like we're going to have to win a flip on this one. So far so good, and we hold. So we'll get off this table. No fish here. So that's a good start to the session win our first flip. I haven't been winning that many flips, honestly, the last few days, but nothing. I mean, maybe that just always seems that way, <laughs> right? Um, you just remember the last two or three that you didn't win. You don't remember the two or three in a row that you win, right? So um, I think I ran decently as far as EV goes on this site, but if you look at my blog, um, you'll notice how, how I think you might remember that I did switch to on WPN for a few days while Ignition was broken last month, and I just ran like crap. I was way under EV, and that um, that made the dragon's mouth or jaw or whatever people call it um, from last month. So I was significantly under EV again for the month, but, you know, as long as we're winning, that's all we care about. I did have my biggest winning month for the challenge, which was over, just over $1,000, um, which is, as I mean... 
We're running way under EV for the challenge, but the bankroll is still moving up. They're not going to keep us back. We're not going to let variants destroy our hopes and dreams. We're just going to keep <laughs> trying to keep winning every month and go from there. Um, so I, I appreciate everybody's patience during this time I've been away. Um, yeah, lots of real life stuff going on, lots of activities. I mean, it's springtime going into summer, close, so. Um, I'm going to try to make streaming a habit again, just because I know a lot of you have been following me loyally since the beginning, and I want to, I want you to see most of the journey all the way up to where we get to uh, our $10,000 goal and beyond. I mean, we're going to set other goals and keep streaming. I got big plans for this. Um, we're going to try and get up to 1000 and now We're going to be nittier with our bankroll. We're going to have to revise our goals here. I think we're just going to have to be big bankroll nits um, with this format, the way Ignition's set up. We're going to have to go for 80, 100 buy-ins before we move up. So um, that being said, I'm not going to keep a whole bunch of money on the poker site itself, but I will keep some set aside in my bank account or whatever. And it's set aside for poker, so it's part of my poker bankroll. So I can reload it anytime I need to. But I will keep you updated on how much I have total towards poker in my poker bankroll, which will include offside funds as well. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna set a goal once we get to our initial goal here of ten thousand, and then we'll go from there. Exciting stuff, and I think um, I think we're right on schedule now. I mean, we were ahead of schedule there for a little bit when we binked that tournament, and then we had a big downswing, and now we're back running okay. Um, if like I said, if you told me I'd be at this point when we started the challenge, I'd been okay with it. You know, we're not in any big rush. I mean, it's nice to be in a rush and get there, but. You can't control the cards. You can't control what the poker gods are doing. All you can do is play the best of your ability. And if you are bit, um, if you are, if you stick with it. <laughs> if you're vigilant to stay, just keep playing your game and keep studying, trying to improve. Thing, good things will happen. And I'm kind of making a cardinal sin here. I haven't been watching the chat since I started streaming today. If anybody's been saying anything, I apologize. I'm going to pull that up right now. And go to the channel here. Uh, looks like they made a few changes to the way Twitch looks <laughs> since I last logged in, which is kind of funny. Um, so I'll have to figure out how to do this. So if you've said anything in chat since the beginning of the stream, I apologize. Will you please say it again? Um, and I'll make sure I answer you. I really do apologize. Um, I kind of can look at my... Um, actually, I can look at my OBS software and I can see that I don't think anybody's sent any chat yet. Let me double check that. I definitely don't want to ignore you. Okay, yeah. Oh, and you'll also notice that I did actually shave my beard off. <laughs> Uh, a couple weeks ago. It's kind of coming back. I'm growing it back. I just for just felt like starting over, you know, um, and perhaps just leaving it off for good if I, but you know, my kids were looking at me strange. They didn't really recognize me, and I think my wife likes me better with a beard, so I think I look better with a beard. I'm getting older. You know, I don't have the youthful face anymore as much, so eh. I mean, it's in style anyway, right? I was bearded before bearded was cool, though. So I can take credit for that, that trend. <laughs> but, yeah, for you guys that I haven't talked to in a while, let me know how you're doing and um, how's poker going for you. All that good stuff. And that's about it. I haven't been playing the, the zombie games either very much, so you don't have to worry about that. I haven't been moonlighting too much. I did play a little bit of the game I had played on here after Ignition went down. What was that called? Um, Seven Days to Die. No fish on this table, so we'll leave. Um, I play it with my brother occasionally, but I'm actually not going to play it probably much this month because I am committed to putting in a lot of hours. I actually have kind of a, not a target in my head, not really a goal. I don't want to set a goal and then be disappointed, but I, I, I'm trying to, I think I can do it, is play 30,000 hands this month. I haven't played, I don't think I've ever played that many hands on Ignition in one month. I think I can do it. I think if I stick to my normal schedule, play my night schedule that I've started playing, and, um, interesting turn, but we'll still check fold this. Um, 
and just play a few sporadic hours here and there each week, I think we could I could get up to um I'm not going to stab at this. Paired board, Jack came. He's not likely to fold an eight or a queen here. And a lot of stuff got there, so I think I'll just give it to him. Yeah, he's he's probably not folding that. Um so I mean I would be extremely happy with just twenty thousand hands, so don't get me wrong. But I think I kinda wanna power through See how many hands I can get at 100 and now I'll play, kill it with volume. Since I can't table select, I might as well, and my win rate's obviously going to probably be lower, although I think it was 13 big blinds per 100 last month on Ignition, if I remember correctly, which is a little bit lower, but that's still way good. <laughs> I mean, as long as I'm above 8 or, actually, if I'm above 5, I'm happy, right? Especially as we move up, but 6 is awesome, right? But anything above that is gravy. But So I'm assuming we'll have a lower win rate. So I think we just have to make up for that by playing more volume. And I kind of just am inspired to just grind it out and get up and, and make, a, make more poker income as quick as possible. It would be nice. I kind of have some things we want to buy and do in life. And I think this is kind of the best way for me to get there is to, is to play poker and... and I might as well speed up that process, and the only way to do that is play more volume. So we're not going to worry about how we're doing in sessions. We're not going to look at the cashier. We're going to stay even keeled. We're not going to tilt. We're not going to worry about whether we're running good or bad because, hey, we have a ton of buy-ins, right? So we don't have to worry about that. We don't have to worry about variance so much. We're just going to play the month out. If we run good, we run good. If we run bad, doesn't matter. We're still playing our game, and that's all that matters. So now that I've frickin' babbled for the first, what, almost 20 minutes of this <laughs> broadcast, ah, I've been good. I'll shut up and I'll play some poker. Hey, thank you for the follow. I do appreciate that. I'm happy you stopped by. I guess I should probably put in the title of this, what we are doing today. Oh, I, yeah, it's definitely out of date. 100 and L. Oh, what did I just do? Nothing good. Oops, oops, oops uh, don't sit out. No, shit, I hate that. Um, the reason I don't have it automatically click, quick, uh, click auto post blind is sometimes when you join a table, not puts you heads up. And I don't really want to play heads up. I mean, if he's a short stack, I'll do it. Or if I know he's a bad player, I'll do it. But who can know that now, right? But sometimes that happens. I won't be paying attention. I'll miss the freaking big blind, so we'll have to wait. But at least we'll get reads now, you know? If you look at it the positive, uh, on the positive side, the glass half full. Change the title of the stream here. Because I am not playing 200 in L, and I don't want to false advertise more than necessary. And, uh, okay. Got some messages here. Uh, yeah, what's all that mean? Huh, okay. Yeah, Twitch changed some of their, the way they're, website looks and I'm just I'll look at that later so we'll click this so that doesn't happen again so is anybody else playing on ignition how do you if, if so are you playing cash games what do you think about the changes um, you like them you hate them a lot of people on 2 plus 2 are whining a lot about it and some have said they've even pulled their rolls off good for me I hope they do that Especially if they're halfway decent players. If they're not, I hope they <laughs> hope they stay. But I don't know. I'm kind of torn. I mean, obviously, with change, there's opportunity created because the person that adapts the best and doesn't sit there and whine like a little baby because there's nothing we can do about it, right? So the people that adapt the best find the angles. Um not angles. Well, what's the right word? Just adapt the best. I guess that's really the best way to say it. And just 
find the best strategy for this way of playing, this format, the way the poker side is set up, are the ones that are going to, there's a huge opportunity here. If everybody else is whining and hemming and hawing and unsure about themselves and, you know, nothing good can come from that. So we're just going to move forward and, and go for it, go for it. But it is going to be a slightly different style of poker now. We're focusing on taking advantage of regs more often than just fish. I mean, there are fish. There's a guy here. Um, holy hell, is he the only one? He might be. This on the tables I have right now. Um. Yeah, I think this is plus EV in the vacuum, and I think it's better to defend the big maybe the small blind with the shove there than it is to actually should have stayed on that table because I had the one fish but, ah, oh well oh well live and learn I try to keep new tables coming in constantly though because I am looking for fish still um, so if I don't see just an awesome table and I have like 32 big blinds I'm just gonna f pull up another table as long as there's ample tables available why not um, that's what I did before when I could table select, so why not do it a little bit now? Why does it say that OBS disconnected? That is, is that doing that again? Is anybody else experiencing that problem? Is that really happening, or is it just a message I'm getting that's erroneous? I don't, it says reconnection successful. I don't understand what's going on with that. I kind of have the nut nothing here so <laughs> maybe we're good yeah we are he thought he had the nuts too though good for us good that he didn't bet well, I never did go through my OBS settings and try to find out why it's doing that I feel stupid for not doing that maybe I'll do that first thing when this is over um, so we're going to try and keep these stream sessions to about an hour. I think it makes for, I think it's better than people having to slog through two hours. And we'll just play an hour. You get a little bit of, you know, get a few hours of strategy a week and just seeing how things are going. And, you know, that way I, I'm not trying to make some huge time commitment that I'll get burnt out on because it is mentally tiring to sit here and talk while I'm playing. I mean, it's especially with the way the games are and I'm not having to do too much active table selection, I can kind of just kick back and watch a video or something and play. And kind of the hours just bleed away <laughs> a little bit. The minutes or hours or whatever. And uh, I kind of like to do that. Um, this is kind of the way I used to play before I was doing too much heavy table selection. Before I got better, let's put it that way. I didn't really get... I don't think I've improved that much as a player over the last couple of years, but what I have improved is just f playing against worse competition more often and uh, ignition threw a wrench into that <laughs> so we might have to just go back to the old way and just just resign ourselves to a slightly lower win rate and just kind of kick back um, be a lot more relaxed and maybe even happier during sessions and um, just shoot for higher volume So we now have more on each table than we started this challenge with. I mean, even though we're back down to playing 100 and L right now, it's still still better than playing with a dollar fifty on each table, right? <laughs> this looks like the type of player that would be three betting wide here. So to keep that in mind, but small sample too. We have the aces for the first time today. That's always a good feeling. Not that you really should be getting good feelings or bad feelings for picking up any particular hand, but eh, I mean it's fun to play aces, right? Especially when a fish limps and you have a three-way. I made pretty big. This guy looks pretty whaley to me, so I'm just gonna let him. Eh, I probably should have made it four. Uh, I, I probably gave him too much incentive to fold here. That's probably a mistake. 
Uh, hey, it worked out for us. Um, so we kind of have the nuts here, unless this guy just happens to have pocket nines or a6 or some 6x hand. So we can kind of bet small and try to get in over three streets here versus, um, I mean, 7, 8 would be the one fear. If we see a 10 or a 5, we might have to be careful here. Um, but I think we want to do something and give him a chance to continue with just crap and maybe connect. See, this is what you what can happen. I mean, he obviously could have his beat right here, but it's more likely this could be a bluff. Um, there's not that many sixes in his range. So I'm just going to call, and then we'll check shove the turn and just get it in. If he happens to have a six pocket nines, what what's the nuts now? What, what's the straight now? Whatever the straight is now, um, he's just got us. Yep, so... He was open-ended there on the turn, so he did improve, so I don't mind his shove. Um, I think we bet fold this river, because I think he's going to have some jacks in his range. It's going to be hard to get value, but I think it's better than check calling. We're setting our price here. Um, yeah, I think once he raises, we're just probably beat most of the time. Um, I think if he's going to bluff, he's probably going to shove. Um, so he could show us a bluff here, but I think most likely he just had it the whole time or got there in the river. Um, so we get led into with a 10. I think a small raise fold might be in line here. And we have blockers to jack 9. Um, 9 7 could obviously ship, but um, we don't want that to happen. Um, yeah, I think against this player, we can bet fold this turn. He's got some better 10s than us right now, but he's also got 10 9, 10 7. Um, he could also have ace eight, that type of hand. He could have pocket nines, um, something like that. I think it's better to bet than to check back. And if he did have somehow have jack nine, we don't want to give him a free card necessarily because it's we're in position, so we're not really going to induce that many bluffs by checking back. It's possible, but not as likely as if it was like a busted flush draw. I don't know why that is, but it just seems to always be the case. People don't. Well, this type of player wouldn't be as apt to bluff in that spot. So let's get our value now. Um, this guy I think is doing this fairly wide here a lot, but I'm just going to be a nit. Uh, I think we just shove there and he just shows us like ace-10, ace-jack or something and we feel stupid. Um, he's not likely to do it light to it twice in a row, but I think he would ISO us again, so I'm going to limp the kings. Um, it's not working out for us so far. We're probably going to end up in a three-way here, which is not ideal in a limped pot, but we'll have a disguised hand anyway, and I doubt this guy's ever got anything. Um, if he has king deuce or ace deuce, we, nah, what are we going to do, right? <laughs> Flop was kind of too good for us. I'd much rather see like king five deuce there and him have something. Um, there's no fish on this table, so we'll just leave. The good thing is about the changes is there's now no red hell timer, which makes sense because if you're constantly having to leave and rejoin tables um, and you can't choose tables, it wouldn't make sense to have a red hole timer. Um, it's very hard to get back on the table. So it's not like I could leave and just intentionally get back on the table I was just on. So it doesn't really matter, but it could happen like within three or four minutes and that's why it wouldn't make sense. It's gonna, it would really piss off some recreational players if they left and then three or four minutes later they couldn't get a table because there was a red hole timer. So, um, I don't think that's something that can easily be exploited. So, I don't think anybody has any leg to stand on when they would complain about such a thing. Although, I know the regs would be complaining about that. The guys that want to sit there and just grind for hours on the same table might not like it. Because they don't want people just to take money off the table and come back. For whatever reason, I don't know why people are that way. Why do these guys just want to play such deep stack poker all the time? I guess... I mean, if they want the fish to have more money, but it's hard to get more money if you are a fish. Just, I don't know, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Most of the fish have sh less than 100 big blinds anyway. Like, this guy's a big fish, and he had more, no more than 50 on this table. So it just seems stupid just to want to have more than, you know, that. This is actually a pretty tricky spot here. <sighs> this guy's a fish. I mean, he does have six aggression factor, but is he really going to just pound away light here? It's a really tough spot because can I just call here and then fold the turn? And then raise us so much money. I can't just fold top pair, top kicker, can I? Alright. I mean, 
That should be a card he doesn't like. If he had a hand like 9-6. I mean, he's so short I shouldn't really care, right? But I just it just feels gross when a fish does this. I mean, he is, does look like he might be on the aggro side, though. So, Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that sucks. I guess we should have just got it on the flop. Um, but I wanted to keep some bluffs in his range, so what are you going to do, right? That's kind of shitty. Yeah, sometimes they get there. There's nothing you can do about it. He was just short stack and was just ready to commit with second pair. And then just got there. Got one of his one of his few outs. So we can't really second. I th actually think the way we played that was probably pretty damn optimal. Um, so I think if the turn is like a deuce, he's still going to put the money in with his second pair. Um, and I think any card comes in the deck, pretty much he's going to put his money in after committing that much. So we just had to avoid, what, a 10 or an 8. And we got him. Looks like on the very next hand he's going to lose all of his money, which kind of sucks. But, oh well, maybe he'll reload. If he doesn't reload, I'm leaving. But I'm not going to tank. Whatever. We'll just move on. We're still up on the table, but we <laughs> could have been up a lot more. But up is up. We'll just move on. Got cooler a little bit there. It happens. At least he didn't have more money, right? I mean, it could have been worse. I mean, if he has like 40 big blinds on that turn, we're probably still going to put the money in. So... Because none of the straight draws got there, you know, it could still be bluffing, like a gut shot or definitely a worse nine. There's lots of worse nines in his range: king nine, queen nine, ten nine, nine seven, jack nine. All those hands. And we were crushing those. Might consider a call here if this guy calls, but without being suited, I'll just not defend versus a cutoff raise. So my VPIP preflop raise is definitely lower now. Um, I don't know what it was before. Honestly, don't remember. I think I'm more in the 2419 range now, something like that. 2420. I don't know exactly. It's definitely, I'm definitely nittier now, which is still. Strong taggish stats, probably. It keeps saying this reconnecting thing, and it's kind of annoying. I don't know why it does that. Hopefully, because I have a delay, it's not affecting the viewing of everybody. Because it, it's built a delay up to like 2.14 now. Strange. Oh, it looks like I did get back on the same table because this guy's sitting out. This is probably that same guy, right? Well, he's not left yet. Maybe he's redepositing and we'll load it up. I think we will shove versus this guy if he opens. And this guy for sure because it's a button vacuum type spot. Yeah. Definitely plus EV here. We like to shove hands that don't play so well post flop. We're not going to set nine when it's plus EV to shove, right? Um, and we'll maybe flat some hands that do play well post flop, like, you know, Queen Jack, you know, Jack nine suited. 7, 8, pseudo connectors, that type of thing. And we'll put it in with the jacks here because that's big plus EV spot. And this guy's 3, 3. <laughs> if he opens, we're kind of worried, right? <laughs> and we get it in very good here and get sucked out on. So that's okay. I'm going to... This guy's aggro, I think I'll limp. I think he's going to just have to ISO there so much. Um, we'll just expect to have the best hand. I think most of his King X, Ace X hands are probably raising preflop. So I think he's going to have a lot of flush draws here, a 3X, and we're probably good now, I would think. 
Wow, that's amazing. How does he not... I'm kind of glad he didn't raise us um, on the flop because he's probably going to call our shove with a7 there. So we kind of saved ourselves $13. So he played his hand differently than usual. And um, we profit because of it. And I think we just check call, check call here, depending on what the river is. Eh, it's kind of a bad river in the sense that he could have a heart draw sometimes. Yeah, it kind of kept him from bluffing too. I think if it's like a s eight of anything besides a heart, he probably bluffs with whatever he had. If he was bluffing, we can check. Yeah, he was bluffing. He had king eight. Wow, the three three guy limped. I have to limp behind when a three three guy limps because I almost think that's got to be like aces, right? I mean, it could be a small pair, I guess. He could just be a card dead before this, but a 3-3 three, three limps? What the hell is he limping, right? I could tread very cautiously here. If this guy gets aggro and starts betting, I probably could just call one straight. And even though I only have 12 big blinds. Um, I get three bet here, and there's nothing I can do, so we'll just leave that table. Yeah, I'm not really loving my hand up here with the monotone board either. So, I don't know. Do three SPR, do we just have to put it in? I don't think we do, but I think we need to bet, right? Thin the field. Make the little small diamond people play. Uh, pay, some, pay a premium. This guy calls, I'm really not pleased. Do I just fold if the 3-3 three, three guy raises? I think I have to. Hmm. We're going to bet fold the turn. Even, even We're going to save our $7 if he raises. I just can't see any scenario where this guy raises and we're ahead here. He could definitely have, like, nines here, though. Yeah. I think if he calls, we're like... Just checking back. <laughs> we might need a jack to win. All right, he must have had like ace king or something there, ace queen. Wow, this guy just basically put in 100 big blinds with um, and a big blind versus a button spot. I almost think, can this really be like a big pair? If it's a pair, it's like nines or tens. I really think this has to be either overs or a small pair. I'm going to call. I just think we're ahead of his range that does this. Yeah, we're ahead of ace king for sure. Now we just need to win the flip, which we do. Yeah, I mean, it just had like ace-king, ace-queen, ace-jack written all over it when he does that, and we're ahead of that. 
I think with tens, nines he might shove, but eight, seven, sixes, five, four, three, twos, he probably shoves. And I think he just three bets with um, his bluffs and like aces, kings, queens, jacks, tens. Twenty-five big blinds. I think we shove here. This guy's opening a lot. It's pretty close. So I think we do that. Maybe this guy's going to be on tilt now on Isilus Light, and we can just shove the sixty big blinds over. <clears throat> Oops! I should be opening that. I don't know why I'm folding. Weird. Did I pre-click that? I guess I did. Oh well, it's only queen eight. It's not going to be a huge winner anyway from the cutoff. Well, I guess it would be on the button, right? Anything's a big winner on the button, especially with a tightish guy in the big blind. I think when people shove versus short stacks like that, they're just thinking, you know, let's see all five cards with my ace king. But what they don't understand is how much information they're getting, they're giving away by doing that. I mean, it would be a lot scarier for me if he did like a, 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 a normal three bet. And I might consider just folding at that point. Um, I think maybe making it like $9 would be a really good bet sizing for him. Could it be really hard for me to tell what he has if he bets like $9 there or not. Not to give anybody watching this any ideas. If you know I'm on a table, you're not allowed to use that information, okay? <laughs> I doubt any regs <laughs> they're playing here would be watching me play. Um, because they, you know, who's going to watch a short stacking scum, right? <laughs> Where's my, oh, I guess I pre-clicked. Why would I pre-click that? I'm losing my mind. I'm being too big of a, a nit. I guess I just assumed somebody would open, but this guy's 5'3". <laughs> and I don't mean height. I mean VPIP pre-flop raise. He's played two hands and 41 hands. I mean, I don't know. This is a spot in the past that I would just shove, but I think have matured to the point where I just think it's about the same EV just to call. So I think calling is better. So why not take the lower variance route? And I don't really flop anything here. Um, there's really not very many good turn cards for my hand, so I think we just check fold. There's a ton of good flops for Ace-10 suited, but that's not one of them. He's certainly going to have quite a few kings in his range. I just really, I mean, this is vacuum, obviously, but he, it is a cutoff range, so. It's a little bit tighter range than a button range, so. I think even with this guy here, we're going to stick it out on this table. He's not going to be, like, pounding on our blinds. This guy's not pounding on our blinds, so. This guy's even stealing only 30%, so. We can just kind of knit it out against these guys, go for some range-on-range -range violence, <laughs> and hopefully come out ahead in that vein, in that arena. good spot for this guy to 3-bet. Hopefully he will. Nope. Sucks. This one we'd have to get a little, little bit more, little more credit.
So we've been playing about 45, streaming about 45 minutes. We'll go 15 minutes more or s just a little bit, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. And plan on doing this again tomorrow. I have quite a bit of paperwork to get done today. So i got to get to that. But yeah, it's good to be back streaming. I mean, it's kind of hard to believe it's one episode 100, but at the, at the same time, it's a long time coming, right? <laughs> I think we were in episode 99. I think it's been two or three weeks, right? So we'll start. We started at $25 episode 1, and episode 100, we're at $3,300, $3,400. So that means in episode 200, we'll be, what's what's the division there? What's the multiplication? So we should be at, what, 50000 by episode 200? <laughs> we hope so. That'd be cool. I think just being above 3,300, 3,400 would be good, though. We'll take whatever. spot. I like this guy sitting here. Eh, I'm just not going to lead into that kind of flop. I think it's just not the way to play it. I mean, sometimes we can have the best hand here, but yeah. This could be a limp shove here. I think raising, we're good with hitting our top pairs today. I don't know if we're seeing the fruits of it so much, but it's been working out for us. And we're obviously just getting it in. This is a committing bet for us. Uh, that's a good result. Good turn. And a suspenseful river. And we get, <laughs> we hold. <laughs> that's the beauty about being down to 15, 12, 15 big blinds is people will just put it in with third pair, second pair, two overs, that type of thing. And we profit. I mean, it's bad if we have a larger bluffing range there, but we just have to watch that, right? Check back a lot more. Have to be vid uh, aware of that, self-aware of what our range looks like and what his um, reaction is likely to be with his entire range. Not to get too deep with you there. I think this could be a check back raise turn on his bet sizing if he doesn't donk bet. I think that might be the best way for us to see a showdown here. We certainly could improve on the turn as well. Um, I'm going to go for it. This might just be a check down spot now. He's probably only betting straights, maybe some two pairs. So I don't think we want to just pound away raise here. He's probably got something pretty good here. He paused on the turn. I mean, I highly doubt a double pot bet. I mean, why is he going to fight for $4 this strongly? I mean, I think if he had a value hand, he, if he had a hand that wasn't like the nuts, maybe he's hoping I have like two pair here or something. I don't know. Um, it looks like he's his little makeup bet, but regardless, we have one bet invested here, so why would we call that? You know, well, usually that's the nuts when people do that. They, they're not gonna be too crazy and like bluff in that spot. Um, when he could just pot it and get the same result, right? And if we were gonna call that size bet, we would probably be better off betting the flop and turn ourselves. Which I think it's just hard to get called by hands that don't have just shit tons of equity or are ahead.
We're pretty good at flopping top pairs today. Even when we're not in the hand. This guy thought about 3-betting, I think. So I'm wondering if he has a hand like ace-jack, ace-queen. Um, I doubt ace-king is a possibility. So we're going to bet like 375 and be done with this hand. I think he's also got some mid-pairs. So if he calls this, he's probably got like king, queen, king, jack, something like that. Um, a lot of, in a lot of his range. I think he's going to hate that flop most of the time when he's got the range of hands we probably think he has there. So the part of his range that he's going to continue with is pretty strong, I think. So, uh, But I, we don't want to induce a bluff either, so I think we could need to bet higher than half pot. We don't want him to turn like jack 10 into some kind of stupid bluff, right? <laughs> Stupid for us, not stupid for him, because it would work. I don't know if this is the same table, it might be. I just missed a big blind. No telling. I guess it doesn't matter, right? Probably should pay more attention to that stuff, but they don't have table names anymore, so you have to look at stack sizes. I think I'm just too lazy too much. If there's like a giant well, maybe I'll check that. But I think just a bunch of faceless regs that aren't really extraordinary in any sense, you know, it's. doesn't really matter. Definitely going for the two streets here. We bet full the river for about six fifty. Just curious if this guy's ever gonna <laughs> as soon as I say that, right? I s I didn't say it though, I started to say it. I was just going to see if this guy would ever play a hand again. So I guess his range here is like jacks to aces, right? Maybe ace king. <laughs> so if he gets three bet and these guys are paying any attention, he's up, right? A little bit since we got here. He's obviously up. So maybe he'll leave and a whale will take his spot. That would be nice. He probably raised there just because he was leaving the table and he had take advantage of his image for one hand. I could see him doing that. I could see people doing that. Maybe he was just also bored and wanted to do something before he left. Probably had more to do with it. And I haven't picked up a hand since I sat here. He's probably and he probably doesn't consider anything but tens plus a hand. Could also have just had the worst run of cards in the history of mankind too, so other top pair for us. A little bit scary when this guy calls. Um we have blockers against most of the a lot of the hands he might have. Um that's a good river for us just to check call now. Cause I think everything Every big hand, I mean every draw missed, so I think he's just bluffing every time he bets there. Unless he just slow played something. Probably had like a second pair or some kind of draw that he didn't want to turn into a bluff. He had, yeah, he had open under jack eight. So, yep. So we've been on this table out. I mean, look at us. We're 13-4 over 24 hands, so it does happen. I mean, barely aggro people can be card dead. Or situation dead? I don't want to say card dead, because a lot of times for us, cards don't matter that much.
So we'll go about five more minutes and then get on with our day here. These guys seem pretty tight so far, so I'm going to give them a little... I think if they're going to call and set my ammo and make them pay a, an unfair price to do so. And that's obviously a good result when we get three betted. Three betted? Three bet? Whatever. We'll do our little countdown here and show. This looks like it's not going to be a fold here. Um, of course, we only have two hands on the guy, right? Well... It's pretty, pretty, pretty loose. And we do hold. He makes a three pair, <laughs> a worthless three pair. Good thing the board was paired on the flop for us. So we'll take it. Well, I just decided to go ahead and put it in with Jack 10. I guess he figured he was committed there. Maybe he didn't uh, notice my stack size. I mean, that's part of the hidden um, profit of short stacking is people will commit or feel they need to commit with inferior holdings just because they did a oops I shouldn't have three bet that guy type situation um, yeah we're not there's no f um, <laughs> there's no version of us folding kings on this table either um, it's gonna look strong no matter what we do so let's just get it in it's not like we're gonna flatten this guy's gonna just fold the flop and we don't want an ace to come you know in case he could fold an ace all right. Wow. Could he have not gotten a better flop for his hand? And we have one out now. Wow. That's pretty unfortunate. That we couldn't well, win both those king's hands. Um. Yeah. Kind of a gross river. I mean, I could see him having like backdoor diamonds or something. I think if he had a hand like a 10 or 5, one he probably bets the flop. And I don't, there's not really that many bluffs once that card hits. Now this guy was 3 betting, this guy's under the gun range with ace 3 suited. Weird. If I have to keep that one in mind. Another top pair for us. Sweet. Not sweet if we get raised, but sweet as it sits. Bet, bet, bet. This guy's going to have a lot of worse aces here. Something like a deuce on the turn would be good for us, or a 7 or an 8. Um, it's not the best because five six got there, but we'll take it. Ace four five six got there. We're definitely bet folding. We're not getting it in there with the ace ten. I think if he raises there, it's just surprise surprise. He just got the nuts <laughs> or said it flops said that he slow played or something. Little Gomer pile moment there for you people out there that know what that means <laughs> if not look it up surprise surprise Gomer Pyle Shazam and if you're familiar with that show the Andy Griffiths show <laughs> the town that that show is based on is about 100 miles north of me um, uh, Mayberry it would be uh, Mount Airy is the name of the town Mount Airy Mayberry when Andy Griffith when he came up with the show that was his childhood home, I believe. That's where he was from. 
They have the Mayberry Days up there once a year. It's a festival. We haven't gone to it yet. We want to. But, you know, they have the old police car there and like a cutout of Barney Fife or something. <laughs> um, it's pretty cool. I've been through there, just not on the festival, during the festival. All right, so maybe we'll play one more hand and then call this session a day. Call this call this call this Twitch session a day. I guess I'm going to play probably later. Do I really want to open with this guy three betting so light? <laughs> probably I mean King 9's kind of a Pretty good hand in our range, though. Has blockers against some of the three betting hands he has. Mm, we'll see. We'll see how much this guy lo uh, likes his cards when he looks at them. Right. I think we got like a 25 30 percent chance of getting three bet here. But I still think it's okay to open that. How about an 8-8 eight, eight flop to end this session for you guys? Sorry guys, couldn't happen. But we'll play this hand out and then we'll go ahead and end the stream. And I'll just close the tables out in a second here. Um, I think my odds of getting 3-bit are going up every time I open. So let's open this one. I could limp as well. But I kind of like the open here. This guy could like light 4-bit this guy's 3-bit. It would be pretty sweet. But no, it didn't happen. He is going to 3-bit here. I can feel it. Feel it in my bones. Maybe we'll get it in versus ace three again. Come on, you know you're gonna do it. No, okay. Surprise, surprise. So yeah, we'll go ahead and end the stream now. Thanks everybody for watching. We will, um, I guess this concludes episode 100. So we got that monkey off our back. <laughs> We're gonna keep going forward with 101 tomorrow. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching everybody. And enjoy the rest of your day.